lot of people think that not much is going on inside a baby's brain. They figure a baby is just laying there crying. What science is telling us more and more every day is what an incredibly rich and exciting and complex environment is inside of the head of a baby. Babies are voracious learners. They are eager to kind of master the world. In the early weeks of life, I mean, babies can differentiate um, the voice of their mother from, from others. They're not just passive sponges taking things in. They are active learners and they are wired with feelings and emotions and the capacity for human relationships and the capacity for mastering their environment. And it all unfolds right in front of our eyes. Sometimes we don't even notice it, but when we look closely, we can see it and we know that it's there in every baby from the moment of birth. It's a very exciting time to be studying brain development in children, uh, largely because the technology has improved so dramatically over the last 20 years that we can now peer inside the brain of a young baby or a young child and not so much tell what they're thinking as much as tell what's going on in that brain. So we can look at the brain's metabolism, the brain's electrical activity, the brain's magnetic activity. All of these things are within our grasp. The basic principles of neuroscience tell us is that it's better to get brain development right from the beginning than to try to come in and fix it later. And if we build a strong foundation in the very beginning of life, we get much better outcomes in the long run and for actually less cost than the much greater price that's paid for trying to fix things down the road. There are certain experiences that are common to children throughout the world when they're born. They expect to have food. They expect someone to take care of them if they're emotionally upset or if they're physically harmed. We assume that children who have those experiences will grow up for the most part just fine. What we're worried about are children who don't have those experiences. Children who live in slums or live in institutions or parts of the world where there's a war raging or where parents abuse or neglect them. All of those things can take a toll on early brain development. And so what we need to pay attention to are children who live in these adverse circumstances and see to it that we can either change their environment by modifying, for example, how their parents take care of them or getting those kids out of those environments and putting them in good ones. Having conversations with their children is very helpful for the children's development. They can change their children's development. They can modify it. They think it's sent from heaven, sent from God. It's innate and it's nothing to do with them. It is everything to do with you and that you can make an enormous difference to the development of your child. Most parents want the best for their child and once they understand that, they're off. They can make a big improvement to their child's development even though they themselves can't read and write. There's a lot of data showing that your cognitive ability on arriving at school predicts to some extent how well you're going to do at school. And this is one way, and not the only way, but it is one way of reducing the poverty cycle, reducing the transmission of poverty from one generation to another. I think it's time that we all recognise this.